Hello everyone, uh, Jeff Wilkerson, astrophysicist here at Luther College. Welcome back to our series of things to look at in the night sky. This is for the week of September 14th. Uh, so we're going to focus on something called the Summer Triangle here. And I think we'll use the Summer Triangle to be our focus for the next several weeks. We'll talk about different aspects of things we can learn about the galaxy, learn about stars, uh, learn about uh, other objects that are interesting by looking at what we can see in the Summer Triangle. Uh, today, we're going we're gonna to talk about the single most exciting thing you can ever talk about when you're doing a science project, and that is coordinate systems and building a coordinate system. So uh, so buckle up, folks. It's gonna, you're you're, you're going to love this. Uh, the Summer Triangle is three stars. Any three stars will make a triangle unless they form a line, but we'll, we'll not worry about that right now. Um, Vega is one of these stars. Deneb is another of these stars, and Altair is the third of these stars. And we'll talk more about the stars themselves next week. Uh, but these stars, very bright stars. So they're 200 billion stars, roughly speaking, in the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy where we live. We'll talk about more of that as it runs right through the middle. The disk of our galaxy runs right through the middle of this. So in a few weeks, we'll talk about that. And, and of the 200 billion or so stars in our galaxy, these are three of the 20 brightest. So from our, our vantage point here on Earth. So they are very bright stars. Now, what we want to talk about right now a little bit with these stars is a coordinate known as declination. And if you look on Earth here, we measure the position of any place on Earth with longitude and latitude. Okay, so you have a latitude line that measures east-westness, and I'm sorry, a latitude line that runs east-west and measures north-southness, and longitude lines run north-south, and they measure how far east or west you are from some given point on the sky. If you project those onto the sky, you project your latitude lines onto the sky, we call that declination. So here in Decorah, we have a latitude of about 43.3 degrees north, plus 43.3 degrees. So that means plus 43.3 degrees would be about directly overhead for us. That's going to, objects with a declination of around 43 degrees will pass through the point directly overhead that we call the zenith point. Uh, Deneb and Vega are two of the brightest stars. Uh, they are the two brightest stars that get within a few degrees of the, of the zenith point for us here in northeast Iowa. Vega has a declination of about 39 degrees, and Deneb has a declination of about 45 degrees. So Deneb gets within two degrees of the zenith point for us directly overhead. So these are really big bright stars uh, that, are, that, are, that are showing up uh, very high in the sky. And we bring this up now, even though it's called the Summer Triangle, and we're transitioning into fall, uh, we bring this up because right now, for me, sitting here at 43 degrees north latitude, as it gets dark, about 8 o'clock at night, uh, Vega's about as close as it's going to get to the, the zenith point directly overhead. So Vega's very bright. Look straight up here, and we see Vega, and Deneb is, is, is just off uh, to the to the east uh, of Vega. Deneb will be at the zenith point in another five or six weeks, sometime in October. So these things are at their highest point in the sky in September and October, just after dark. And so Altair, on the other hand, Altair is about 30 degrees south of Vega. And so Altair would have a declination somewhere on the order of nine degrees. So we have to look pretty far south to see Altair to form this triangle. So that's our, our, our summer triangle. These things. Um, relatively easy to see. Big bright stars again. All three of them are among the 20 brightest as seen from Earth. They shine through the haze of summer. Uh, when you have a, a, a muggy August night, it's very hazy. You can see these stars shining through. I think that's how they became famous. This pattern of stars has been recognized for several hundred years. People have made uh, at least oblique references to it. Uh, it's really been a popular asterism, a popular pattern of stars for mid-northern latitude observers for about 70 years or so. And you see it uh, a lot of places now. People talk about the Summer Triangle and write about the Summer Triangle. So again, these are very close to the zenith for us at a certain time. Now they're moving. They're rising in the east and setting in the west, so they'll only be at the zenith uh, briefly, and then they'll move right on across, be near the zenith briefly. They're only at the zenith for an instant. They're not even all quite on the zenith, uh, just within a few degrees of it, and then they move off. So as the year goes by, as the night goes by, we see them rotating around. But we want to look at one more thing as we talk about this coordinate system. So there you are. Yay, that's you. You look up to see the zenith, 
And objects that are there have a declination equal to your latitude wherever you are. Okay? For me, that's plus 43 degrees, but wherever you are, that, that zenith is the declination equal to your latitude. Now, in a perfect world, that's a straight line. That's 180 degrees, 90 degrees down this way, and 90 degrees down this way. So in a perfect world, you could see uh, down 180 degrees either direction. Now, the world's not perfect that way. There are hills and trees and buildings and, and all kinds of things, so you don't see all the way. Uh, to the northern horizon and the southern horizon. That's north for me, that's south down here, but you could transfer all of this to the southern hemisphere, no problem at all. So what that means is you could see objects, theoretically, I could see objects that are, anybody could see objects that would have a declination equal to the latitude minus 90 degrees. For me, that's going to be about 43 degrees minus 90 is going to be about negative 47 degrees. Now, I don't see objects down to negative 43 to 47 degrees. There's a lot of atmospheric obscuration and a lot of foreground stuff in the way, but that would be the absolute hard limit of what you could see. Now, you go up the other way, and it's going to be latitude plus 90 degrees. But when you get to 90, you start counting back down again. So what happens is you have a whole group of stars that are up here. This is declination equals 90 degrees. You have a whole bunch of stars in here that you start counting back down that as they rise and set, they don't rise and set. They don't ever get below the horizon. And we call those the circumpolar stars that we can see in the sky anytime. And so the absolute theoretical limit for the circumpolar stars is going to be a declination that is greater than approximately uh, 90 degrees minus your latitude. So for me, again here, it says that everything that's above about 47 degrees in declination will circle the pole and never get above or below the horizon, and we call that circumpolar. So uh, the stars of Cassiopeia that we looked at last week, circumpolar for me. Uh, the stars of, of, of the Big Dipper, circumpolar for me. Can I see those all the time in the night sky? Uh, not really well uh, because of the, of the uh, obstructions on the horizon that we talked about earlier. But we can see the limits of what we can see. Anything that has a declination below minus 47, no hope for me. Uh, anything that has a declination of above plus 47, I see a lot of. Now, if we're at the North Pole, uh, it's the latitude is 90, and 90 minus 90 is 0, and so everything that has a declination above 0 would be circumpolar. So, in fact, you'd see the northern half of the sky all the time circling around. South Pole, you'd see the southern half of the sky all the time circling around. And if we're at the equator, latitude is equal to zero. 90 minus zero is 90. You would need a declination greater than 90 degrees for something to be up in the sky circumpolar all the time. No such thing exists. So you would have no circumpolar stars at the equator. And as you move north or south, you get more and more uh, circumpolar stars, stars that are up in the sky all the time. So we look, go back to what we were talking about earlier and say Deneb, for example, has a declination that is 45 degrees, and for me, um, I needed something greater than 47 degrees to be circumpolar, and 45 degrees is pretty close to that. Vega at 39 degrees is actually not too far from that. So Vega and Deneb are in the night sky a lot. Even though we call them part of the summer triangle, at some time during the night, from here, here in Iowa, I can go outside and see those two stars almost any night of the year uh, because they're really close. They just barely get below the horizon there. So summer triangle stars, uh, very near the pole right now for, for me here in, in Iowa. And other stars would be at the pole for you, wherever you are. Um, for, not the pole, the zenith, excuse me. Uh, and so very near the zenith directly overhead. And so um, these stars are pretty close to circumpolar. So keep an eye on these stars. Look at the stars of the summer triangle and watch how they evolve uh, how they move over the next few weeks, and as if you're if you're anywhere near where I am, you would see uh, Vega the, close to the zenith right now, and that'll be replaced by Deneb in the coming weeks, as closer to the the, the zenith just after dark. Uh, we're talking about eight o'clock. That's going to crawl to seven thirty, uh, even seven o'clock as we get into October. Thanks everybody. Have a good week.